Hi, my name is Gavin Minter, and um, this is the third episode called Finding Your Own Voice. And this is part of the Cape Town Music Academy's Daily Music Tips. There's another quote from Picasso, and it says, Good art is copy from somebody, but great art is still from everybody. And I've spoken about the importance of listening to other music, and this episode is a follow-on and not a contradiction in understanding, as finding your own voice will entail a lot of listening, a lot of practicing, a lot of borrowing, a lot of transcribing, a lot of trial and error, and dedicating time to scrutinize the musical heroes and idols we love will always make up and add to your sound. But to find your own voice will require a deeper look at yourself. You know, if you listen to Winston Mankuku, you can hear his influence. You can hear a bit of Train or a bit of Sonny Rollins in his, in his sound. But you feel Winston Mankuku. He plays in the spirit of Winston Mankuku. You hear his story, his trials, his joy, his love, his journey, his faults, his pain, his commitment. All of this and more is embodied in one note from Winston. So finding your voice doesn't mean that you stop learning. In fact, it means the opposite. The more you search and learn about yourself, the more you will add to your voice. And this will evolve as you do as a person. And I, I feel that w walking in a forest or, or, or watching a sunrise or walking in the rain is as important as practicing a 251. Because all experience feeds to the essence of you. And this is your voice. There are hundreds of thousands of great musicians, but few will touch you on a level that compels you to commit to their journey. And all these artists have distinct voices that you can identify with. You know, I have a friend, Buddy Wilds, and I met Buddy when he was a young saxophone player just out of college, and he had a strong brecker sort of infused sound with a bit of Coltrane and a bit of Joe Henderson and a bit of Mankuku and a bit of Duke Mukazi, and, he's, and he was a great player, and he played well, and... A couple of years later, I heard Bud again, and and he was he was playing very differently. He was sort of unrefined and and unpolished, and to to some degree, I thought that he had gone backwards. And I was like, I wonder what's wrong with Bud's playing. And and then I realized, in retrospect, that he had taken a few steps backwards to clear a, to clear a path for him finding his own voice. And a few years later, I saw him again, and he had now changed his setup. He got rid of the Mark VI he was playing on, and the, and the linked mouthpiece, and was, was struggling with an old con horn. And, and I've never really had this conversation with Bud, but over the next few years, I noticed how his personal voice had now blossomed. To the degree that if I hear a few notes from a saxophone, I'd be able to tell you if it's Buddy or not. And, and, and I clearly now understand his sound, his ghosting of notes. I feel his searching, I feel his apprehension, his joy, his struggle, and clearly his voice. You know, you need to practice and internalize all the information that will allow your voice to be expressed. All the notes and all the technique will give you facility but the essence of you will be layered with experience, personality, and purpose. I, and I personally believe that the most integral part of any artist is their emotional content. And life experience is the teacher in this regard. So tell your truth, find your voice, and sing your song. Like a song. 